Hey guys, how's it going? It is Mike here from Search Scientists, and I'm really excited today to put this video out for the DSL community. It's something that people have been talking about, something that uh, I think will help a lot of people with optimizing their PLAs, and it's been a long time coming. So let's jump into advanced Google PLAs. Now, now PLAs are usually the foundation for e-commerce stores on Google. They're high, they're high converting, they're super targeted, and it's very easy to beat the competition using the method that we're about to do. It's also super targeted. You know, the keywords come straight from the product feed. You don't have to pick keywords. You don't have to do keyword research. You don't have to upload keyword lists and so on and so forth. Google only shows these commercial ads for commercial keywords that come from your product feed. So they're really easy to get going. And generally they're high converting right out of the gate. And that's due to the nature of what a product listing ad is you know it's blocking people that don't like the shop because it's got the price in there it says shop for it uh, so it's got the image of the product so if people don't connect with what they're looking at they're not going to click this saves you money and in turn only people that are interested in shopping and do like the price and do like the image will end up clicking through therefore your conversion rates will be stronger now it's good and bad about this. Now it's good because you only show up for relevant terms in your product feed, but it's bad at the same time because you have to pay the same price for every term you appear for, even though not all of them are equally profitable. Now most product listing ads, whenever I, I crack open an AdWords account, typically it looks like this. People have all products in a single PLA campaign. Now this is fine for getting started uh, when you're really busy and you have a million things to do with your e-commerce store probably this you know will be okay however in order for you to get better control from your campaigns you know we talked about this two campaign model in the first campaign on the left that's where you, all of your high converting terms roll in it allows you to bid a little bit more aggressively so you get more traffic for these really high roi terms that people search in you know we talked about using negative keywords to block the weak terms now in campaign two on the right side we talked about funneling all of your weaker but still relevant terms where you bid a little bit lower so you still get that traffic but you're getting it at a cheaper rate uh, and you block the strong terms so this is something that we talked about uh, this is this in and of itself is something that most people don't know how to engineer and it's a great way to get ahead of your competition now I shared this information in my 2015 DSL presentation. So if you're in DSL, which I assume since you're watching this, but you should go and watch that presentation because I talk about it for about 30, 40 minutes. So if this is seeming like it's over your head, go back and watch that presentation. It'll fill you in. However, at the time, I only shared information on basically this method, the negative keyword method. And the reason I didn't mention the other way, because I didn't want to throw too many terms out there all at once, because then I'd be talking about, you know, keyword control and product listing ads, campaign segmentation, negative keywords, negative keyword management, and campaign priority. Now today, I'm going to share the advanced way, which is the campaign priority way. And I'm not going to cover what campaign priorities are, and where to find them inside your account, this is definitely uh, only a video for people who have already set it up the old way or people who are more advanced and are looking to really take their PLAs to the maximum level. So how to set it up. There's a three campaign mode and a two campaign mode. Let's cover the three campaign mode first. In your, camp in your first campaign is where you will appear for your general terms. In this, you keep your priority high. And you may be thinking, why on earth would I put my general terms on a priority high? Don't worry, you'll see in a few minutes. So you have your priority on high, you have your bids low. So you're bidding low, say 50 cents or less or, or something like that. And now in your negatives here, all of your brand terms and your SKU terms and any other high converting terms get thrown in here and they get added as negatives. So again, campaign one, priority high, bids, low bids, negatives. All the brand terms, all the SKU terms, anything high converting. Boom. Campaign two, your brand terms, high converting terms, priority, medium, bids should be higher than campaign one, negatives, very specific SKU terms. And in campaign three, your SKU terms, 
priority low, bids the highest, negatives only bad SKU terms, which there probably aren't any. Now, how does this work? Let's actually talk about why you have your worst terms on a high priority and your better terms on medium and your best terms on lowest priority. Well, this is how it works. A term gets searched, Google looks at what campaign to trigger and it starts looking at the highest priority. So if a negative is blocking it, it'll move to the next campaign down. Let's take a look at a quick sample. Let's say you sell these, my same example for my 2015 crappie presentation, Oakley Men's Holbrook sunglasses. Let's say somebody searches something fairly specific, fairly branded, Men's Holbrook. This would be considered a branded high converting term. So in campaign one, it would first register. Google would take a look at campaign one. Okay, we're eligible here. This is high priority, so I'm looking here first. The bids are low, okay, fine. But I've added the negative keyword, because as you know, as I said, in campaign one, you're blocking all of those brand terms. So it's blocked. Now in campaign two, I don't have that branded negative and it gets triggered. So I'm able to bid more aggressively here, which is the exact goal. And then let's say somebody searches just a general term, sunglasses. Well, very simple. It gets triggered in campaign one where you have your low bids. So you're bidding more aggressively for a specific branded term and you're bidding less aggressively for a generic term. The two campaign variant is very, very similar. It's a little easier and gets the exact same result. Um, basically, the only difference is you're just lumping together the SKU terms, which are generally super high converting, and you're just throwing them into campaign two. So you're just calling campaign two your high converting terms and campaign one low converting terms. And this is exactly how it works. Campaign one, priority high, bids low, negative, all your strong terms. In campaign two, high converting terms, Priority, low, bids, high. Now the negatives here, you technically don't even need any because the only terms you will appear for are the ones that are at, that have been added as a negative in campaign one. Do you see how this works? So in general, if somebody searches a random term, it's you're going to be able to be bid very low for it because that random term, if it's not, hasn't been added as a negative anywhere, it's gonna be triggering in campaign one which is great because you're bidding low. So all of these generic terms, these low converting terms, these irrelevant terms, you're only bidding low for them in campaign one. Anything strong gets added as a negative in campaign one and then shows up in campaign two where you're bidding way more aggressively. So how is this actually different than the method I described in 2015 at the Krabi presentation? Well, it's different because right off the bat in campaign two, you barely have to add in any negatives because you only appear for terms here that have been added as a negative in campaign one. So of course, bad terms need to be added as a negative everywhere. So if you sell men's sunglasses, you'd probably want to block the word women and women's in both of your campaigns, of course. But the point is, you don't have to manually look at your, your high converting terms and then you know add those as negatives and all those things. You simply have to add your strong terms as negatives in campaign one, and then you will automatically appear for them in campaign two. Weak terms um, and, and totally irrelevant things, when they get added as a negative, they typically get added as both. So to recap, if you were to take a screenshot of this, this is what you would take your screenshot of and work it that way. Uh, sometimes we use the three campaign priority method and sometimes we use the two campaign priority method. It uh, depends on how much traffic you have, depends on how much SKU level traffic you have. I've seen campaigns where they have thousands of SKU searches every month, so it really makes sense to go that extra step and just put the really specific SKU terms. But if you're doing it the, the campaign model too, um, you know, add the bad terms to negatives everywhere, but basically this is the way that it gets set up. Good luck everybody. If you have any questions, let's get a Facebook thread going and be happy to answer them.